All right, so I'm gonna, uh, oh, my bad. Um, actually, anybody else wanna read this so I don't have to speak? <laughs> I'll read it. Or Brian, maybe, but I guess Brian's got a lot of noise in the background. Um, well, I'll read it. Uh, Anthony, I know you go by ARAM. I, by the way, I don't know if anybody's been following Anthony's uh, music stuff, but I think you just dropped a new track, right? Yeah, yeah. Like last week, we, uh, we dropped a, uh, a new single, um, and it's called Forever. It's one that I, I wrote uh, so that my wife could enjoy it. It really just explains the, the love that I have for her, but then I wrote it in a way that... Um, uh that other people depending on you know it doesn't matter what what stage in the relationship they may be in that they can enjoy as well and so that dropped last week sweet mm -hmm. so check that out um okay and All right, Brian, yeah definitely let's link yeah um anyways you're affiliate native of puerto rican descent uh anthony serves as a project director of national programs and, and esperanza incorporated a nonprofit serving serving the underserved in our community he supports leadership programs, engages people in voting initiatives, which is relative, uh, rel sorry, relevant to tonight. Um, he has overseen youth mentoring programs in seven cities across the country, led local Bible engagement efforts, and spearheaded the hashtag go and do campaign, encouraging acts of kindness in our neighborhood. A graduate of Esperanza College himself as co-valedictorian in 2011, Anthony Ramos went on to study social work at Eastern University and theology from Mesillo Seminary. Whether at juvenile detention centers, on the football field with Timoteo Sports, or in his church, Anthony seeks to mentor youth and inspire them with his life experience. Through his original music, Aram aims to help his listeners make the connection with their God-purpose design, regardless of their societal background. He and his wife, Brittany, are blessed with three children in North Northeast Philadelphia. And um, I guess I'll just give a little context. I mean, um, I know that you had invited, Anthony, you had invited some different leaders that are involved with youth, young adults locally um, to a, a Zoom call where you, got, where you kind of got to share about your heart for trying to find ways to engage young people in civics. And yeah. you, know, you had a whole presentation and stuff like that and then you, you know, had some emails and stuff. And I know that Esperanza USA has probably been one of the biggest, most active nonprofits locally within what I would consider the kind of more faith-based Christian sort of world. Yeah. Um, that tries to engage this stuff, you know, um, because I know some of the secular nonprofits, right? Like, um, I even think probably Lynette, your, I think net where the networks, um, they've, they've done some voter turnout kind of stuff. Um, but I know yeah, we have one next Friday, right? Just kind of one of these voter events that, since I've been involved in the neighborhood, I've seen that you guys have the whole time you've been involved in trying, your organization's been involved in trying to um, encourage participation, you know? So yeah, I, I, I figure you guys have a lot to say, um, but yeah, I just want to turn the table over to you um, just to kind of continue the, help us continue the conversation around faith and politics. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, definitely. No, man, but I, I appreciate the, uh, the invite to be here. It's good to see, um, Marquise, uh, again, uh, Lynette, she, I don't know if she remembers me, but I, re I remember her from when you invited me out to speak at Bocasio. So it's cool to see uh, Lynette as well. And then Brian will be cool to link up with you as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited to be here tonight, uh, and talk about this. I know this is something that, uh, I myself had to um, uh, piece together and kind of learn a little bit more um, just because I don't come from a, a background that emphasizes um, civic engagement or participation as something that's normal. You know, I just come from a home that says, hey, when you're, when you're eligible to vote, uh, you're going to vote, uh, you know, uh, you're going to be Democrat uh, because the whole family's Democrat. And the, you know, the Democratic Party is for us in such ways. So it's like very stereotypical, um, not fully informed. Um, but when I continue to grow up my faith and I saw that there is actual parallels between what we see in scripture um, and how uh, Jesus taught, but also lived and practiced 
um, I saw that there is an actual parallel between um, our involvement in society um, along with our faith. And um, I know we, you know, we have, um, you know, we have systems in our society that tells us like, you know, these are taboo to topics, right? Like speaking about religion, speaking about uh, politics, like those are things that just, you just really don't talk about much. Um, and then when we dive into even in, in the church uh, setting, politics is a no, no, um, just because, um, you know, one, you know, people have differing opinions on policies. Um, and even more, you know, conservative circles would look at participation in civics as um, as secular, you know, that this is, those are, uh, those are worldly things. And so I come from a very, uh, conservative Pentecostal background where, um, you know, it's, it was like high eschatology, you know, Jesus return, uh, renewal of the world, um, and really just no real deep thought into the world that we were currently living in, um, and how to make this one closer to, uh, the one God spoke into existence in um, Genesis chapter one and two, right? Um, and so, yeah, just seeing in scripture, um, it's, it's very, it's, it's clear. And, you know, I, and I have some, um, some, some verses to bring up as well. But, um, you know, I just find it that we see throughout scripture um, where God continually makes that connection between our faith and how we connect to our society, like what is right. Um, we serve a God who, um, who has a position to, uh, oh, thanks. Uh, you know, God, um, actually, yeah, let me do that right now then. Um, you know, we serve a God that has his uh, specific position towards um, the poor, right? And so um, we see throughout scripture, um, that, you know, Jesus, you know, God, Yahweh, uh, Jesus in the New Testament, um, speaks about, uh, the poor, how do we treat the poor? Um, how do we do things fairly? Um, all of that. Right. And then, um, and one of the words that I, I you, you can actually kind of find throughout scriptures, this word justice, right. Um, actually, do you guys just see the slide or do you guys see my notes as well? I just want to make sure that it's, it's the full slide for you guys. It's the slide. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So like, again, yeah. One of the, the, the words that we see throughout scripture is this word justice. Um, uh, and what's interesting is that, um, and I think I, I, I might be going on a limb here, but um, I don't know if Brian's still here. Um, but maybe Lynette or, you know, maybe Marquise, if you want to take a, ta uh, a tackle on this, like how, how would you, like, if you know Spanish, what is the Spanish word for justice? Justicia. Justicia. Yes. Thank you, Lynette. Yeah. So it's justicia, right? Now, Lynette, since you, since you were uh, courageous enough to share your Spanish with us, um, I'm going to ask you another question. How do you say righteousness in Spanish? Or anyone else? Righteousness, how do you Spanish? It's not a cognate. That's all I know. I don't say it's, it often. It's what? It's not a cognate. Like justice is a cognate. So justicia, that's a cognate. Um, so, but righteousness is, um, I was just, mm. What do you think it's okay. I, it's blinking in my brain. You're right. Yeah, you're right there. Marquise, you want to take a stab at it? <laughs> do I? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, really quick, uh, justice and righteousness, they actually have the same word. Uh, the same word. So in, in both the Old Testament and New Testament, um, the word for justice uh, is, is just one word. Um, and so there's plenty of correlation and uh, parallelism with the words justice and righteousness in scripture, as we see in the word uh, um, in Spanish, right? Righteousness in Spanish is justicia. Um, same as justice in Spanish is justicia. Um, and what we see is that this, 
this righteousness, this oneness with God, this uh, being made right or in right standing with God um, is very well linked to how justice is uh, attributed and um, executed in society. Um, and so we see that in scripture, right? Uh, for example, like, you know, I have some here, you know, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like ever flowing streams. And we see these two words continually be word pairs throughout scripture together, right? Isaiah chapter 32, verse one, uh, see a king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule with justice. And then lastly, um, uh, from this example, but there's plenty more, uh, a king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule with justice. And that's Psalm 72, verse two, uh, one through two. And so um, we see uh, this word, uh, sedek in Hebrew and then diakios in, in Greek, both having the same uh, full meanings, right? Justice and righteousness being compounded one, right? Um, and really what it implies is that these two words um, are thinking about justice and righteousness as the same thing. Um, and it also implies to us that our concept of justice and righteousness, uh, by which we give them two different meanings, uh, could potentially be wrong. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it encompasses two, um, two ways of being that shouldn't be separate. Um, and how I would break this down is really, uh, if you look at righteousness, that's a character trait that is God given, that is God endowed right? Um, giving a right standing with God, right? What we see in scripture, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Philippians chapter three, verse nine, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, right? It's something that is God endowed and is Christ given. Um, so this right standing is with God and it's, it's something that we don't uh, merit, uh, nor could we uh, uh, be able to uh, display outside of Christ, right? So it's something that is God given. And then justice, that's also something that, uh, that a God allows us to walk in to be able to execute God's justice properly, right? Um, because apart from him, you know, um, our, our, our good deeds are just filthy rags, right? Um, and so we see these two words, right? They're, they're, they're closely together. However, like even in church circles, we, we tend to uh, favor one over the other. And a lot of the times that's righteousness, right? Like we want to be right with God and how to be right with God. You know, so we pray, we uh, do a lot of different uh, spiritual disciplines, um, attend church services, you name it, right? Um, and we focus on the individualistic aspect of someone's right standing with God. Um, however, we neglect that second part of that word, which is justice, right? And how does that look like executed in this society that we live in? Um, again, talking about, you know, from, from my experiences of a very conservative and traditional uh, Pentecostal background, um, it has a high eschatolo uh, eschatological view of, uh, of what's to come. And it's really just this preparedness for Jesus's return. And there was, even though it could have been unintentional, uh, but it really wasn't uh, intentional that there was a neglect of how we, uh, you know, engage society, you know? Um, and when we're talking about how much God is frustrated throughout scripture with uh, leaders who uh, put people in, who, are, who are poor in, in vulnerable situations where they're not being cared for, um, you know, we see throughout scripture, which, you know, there's an emphasis on caring for the poor, for the, for the widow, uh, for the fatherless, the orphan, right? Um, you know, if that's the case, uh, why is it that not being as much of an emphasis in the way that we do church? Um, and it could very well be like, there's this like separation um, from, from church and state, right? Because um, we used to live in a society that was uh, the term Christocentric, right? Um, where the society looked to the church for the answers for the problems in society. Mm. Now in the 21st century, you know, the church is not viewed that way anymore. Um, the church is, you know, really um, 
what Jeremy and I were, were, were taught um, at seminaries is on the margins, right? It's, it's looked at as something that is irrelevant and is growing irrelevant, um, at least in the view of many uh, individuals in the world. Um, and, and the number of people that view church as relevant continues to decrease um, throughout different generations. And so, um, and the reason I, I bring that up, actually, there's a Barna study. Barna is an organization that does uh, research uh, and compiles data around church in s- certain topics. And um, one of the research areas was on Bible engagement. How often do people read their Bible? Um, and for the, uh, the Gen Z, which is the generation that I believe was born from 1996 to 2018, I believe. Uh, 96, 18, or maybe, no, no, I'm sorry. 18, yeah, maybe 2018. So like that whole generation, um, that there is a 4% um, uh, population of the Gen Z generation that reads their Bible at least three to four times a week. And the reason why that number is significant is that three to four, if someone is... Uh, one of the other studies that they did, I'm sorry, I think I just, one of the other studies that they did was that if somebody were to read their Bible three to four times a week, they're more likely to do what's in the Bible. And so we, if we have a, a generation that is not reading the Bible, it's more likely that they don't look at the, the world through a biblical, uh, a biblical lens. Um, and if they're not looking at the world through a biblical lens, um, uh, then we have a, a generation that is, uh, not likely to do what's in the Bible, right? Um, and so how do we then live out these principles of, uh, of what is right before God, being right with God, but being what is also right with God by serving those uh, in our community? And so I think conversations like this is super important just because, again, there is this uh, distinction for whatever reason. And maybe I'll just pause here and kind of hear from you guys that, that can uh, share, like, what's your experiences from from churches, um, you know, just specifically uh, your experience on um, on civic engagement, and what, and that can mean different things, right? Voter registration, that can mean uh, meeting with city council persons, that could mean serving your community, like providing food and clothing um, for those that are in need, um, you know, the beautification of your neighborhood, block cleanups and stuff like that. Like how, how how often do you guys think that those those are activities that are that are done on a uh, on a regular basis? Yeah, I mean, I think I think in general, probably on average, churches in North Philadelphia may be a little bit more engaged, at least from my experience. Um, with their neighborhood or with caring for local issues and the churches in like more suburban places in my in my I mean that's probably very general but it's because there's more needs that they feel that they see around them and they want to help with them you know yeah I mean I, I've also seen I don't know that Brian says it's so rare that if you do do it uncool said Oh, reading the Bible. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that, uh, I think that one of the reasons though, that I think a lot of times church leaders, uh, including me, um, you know, that we struggle is that like, once you think about politics, you don't want to quote, unquote, get political, you know? So, um, in, encouraging people to get out there and be civically involved, um, could be hard if you feel like it's getting too political. And another thing is, um, you just you realize that there's only a couple, there's only so many things you can tell people, encourage people to do. So if you're trying to encourage people, go invite more people to church, kind of thing. You know, like you can only sort of push people to do a, a couple of things at once. You know, yeah. Encouraging people to do that, then it seems like oh, now you want me to do that, and you want me to kind of like go and, I don't know, participate in a community meeting and all these other things. Like I could see that a lot of times it just doesn't get, people don't get to it, if that makes sense. You know, Mm. that's that's a thought. I don't know what you guys think. So 
the, the topic in faith, faith, politics, and whatever was in the Did someone get cut off? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Marquis, sorry, I, I cut him off. Mm -hmm. You're saying, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was, I was gonna, the title was, uh, with the part of oh, somebody's title was Faith and Politics, something yeah. like that. And had a question mark, and you know, I'm not really a fan of politics, you know, I don't really get into that stuff, you know. Um, but I really can you bring that slide back up actually? Yeah, that the, the slide that was, um, come on, um, uh, hold on, not this one, right. Uh, okay, keep talking. Oh, okay. Oh, well, well, I'm not really a fan of politics, but you know, I was thinking about, I was like, you know, like, I'm thinking about why, like, like what type of political movement did Jesus, uh, you know, implement or install, what do you want to call it? And what you was talking about how, uh, something about like serving the community and like, helping people out and I realized that's something that's political and that's something political right there because you know politics talks about you know how to make the community better you know certain things do this and this and that but Jesus tells us how to you know treat the community better treat our neighbor better you know help one another out so there is politics uh or political whatever you want to call it politics and um faith i guess you know so i really don't know <laughs> what the question mark would be <laughs> but that's all i want to say like I, I, in my head i'm like man like like politics belong over there and faith belongs over there but they are actually united in one you know it's, it's, it's like one entity you know we are the ones who separate the both and, and it's like it's something that's supposed to be viewed together you know? and that's all i probably mean. No, that's great, man. That's definitely heavy, man. I appreciate you sharing that because I think that's um, you brought a lot uh, to the plate with that that sharing, man. Um, I think we just have to expound a little bit more on that word politics, right? Because I think it carries a negative connotation, right? It has a negative, um, it has negative weight to it. Um, you know, e even the way that you know some of us would say, like, oh, I don't want to get political when we talk about like um the government system or when we think about like just advancing in a um in in an organization um or an organization itself like there's political things right we, we use that as a phrase to say like you know it's it's a lot of um uh organizing and it just carries negative weight i don't know if if, if you guys had that experience with it too um and so but the word Politics comes from this word called uh, polis, right? Which is also the same word that, uh, you know, where we get the word uh, police from. Oh, no, Jeremy, if you can leave that up, I'll, 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 I'll want to. Um, you want to you keep mine up or you want to? Yeah, yeah, really quick. Um, but uh, yeah, like the word polis, um, it means a, a, a group of people. Um, they're part of a governing um, society, right? Um, and so really politics is pe politicians, people that are for the people. Same thing for police. Police officers are supposed to be for the people. Um, but again, those two, even those two words have very negative connotations and it has carried it carry negative weight. Um, but what you said, Marquise, is very essential is that, um, you know, what Jesus did was politics. It was serving the people. Um, and when we look at, you know, statements that Jesus made, um it wasn't for us as if we look at it from a church it is not for the church to shy away from participating in society he actually encouraged it right when he told the disciples he says uh whatever is caesar's give to caesar's right like he's talking about like the whole paying tax thing like that's that's a political statement right there and then also you know those who are sick uh you go visit them you feed the naked i mean you feed the uh the hungry you clothe the naked um you you visit those that are in prison um you know and and then even the 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 statement um that we that i shared earlier uh which i i don't need to bring back up right now
but it's Matthew chapter five, verse 14 through 16, where he, he says, you are the light of the world. A town, a, a, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden, right? So a city, uh, a polis uh, on a hill cannot be hidden. And what he meant by that was that the church shouldn't be absent from society, but in a position in society to influence society. Um, and so really encouraging the church, you know, through uh, us receiving the gospel, right, that, that allows us to be able to shine the light, right? Like think about like the, the, uh, the old hymnal, right? Uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? This, that light comes from the gospel itself, right? The good news of Christ. And when being transformed with the good news of Christ, it, 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 it encompasses so much, right? Like it, it, it talks about like, you know, there's no Greek, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, uh, but we're all one, right? Like this whole thing about equality, right? Um, you know, when, when someone is, is, is poor and unable to care for themselves, that the society comes up with a structure to be able to support those that are unable, right? The vulnerable, the, uh, uh, the voiceless, being able to raise a voice for the voiceless. Um, and so we get that from scripture, um, not only in the Old Testament, but also Jesus echoed those very same words. And so um, I would say, you know, that's, that's, what, that's where we see this whole idea with faith and politics. And I know, again, we get this taboo idea of like, you know, separation between church and the state, separation between, um, uh, you know, church community and policy and whatnot. Um, but I like this this idea here, right? This whole uh, these two circles, right, of faith and politics, and this uh, this meeting in the middle. Um, and I would say, you know, for me, my position on it when I saw this, um, and I can see why there, you know, I've had conversations about the same idea with pastors, with youth leaders, and um, I had a pastor say, no, I think these two circles need to be separate because politics, meaning the the world, how how he defined it, this pastor. Uh, meant that it was worldly. Um, and if these two circles were to be together, if this church would be connected to this other circle, which meant the world, then the church could be influenced by the world negatively. Um, and then, you know, there's, you know, they miss out on their own blessings, sort of say. Now I'm just filling in his words, but pretty much that was his reasoning why these two circles need to be separate. Now, how I look at it is that maybe I wouldn't have those two circles completely locked in that, that way. Maybe there's um, uh, dotted lines or dot, yeah, the dotted lines around, right? And the meaning is that to me, how I look at it is that the faith is in position to be in those areas where it can influence society. Um, and to be honest, like the church needs to be confident in who the church is um, and not out of fear that we have to like digress and like hide in Noah's Ark right? And as we wait for Jesus to return, right? Like we're, we're, we're going to be, we're going to hide in our churches because we don't want to be negatively influenced, right? And so we've taken this position of defense um, and rather than a position of offense, right? Where, where Jesus told Peter, he says, I have given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, the gates of Hades, the Hades, the meaning hell will not prevail against you, right? Like those are words of of, of offense, right? Like giving you the ability to take the offense of things, right? And so the, the church should be confident in who they are to be able to influence society, right? Being able to voice their positions on caring for the poor, uh, making sure that there's policy in place that if there's families that are unable to uh, feed themselves, right? Because of the lack of funding and resources that they have, that the tax dollars that we're paying to government to make sure that government puts in position places and, and resources to help families that need them, right? Um, and we do that by having conversations with city council representatives, those that are affecting our community in the local level. Because uh, when we do that, um, you know, I'm gonna tell you this, like Washington is not that far from here, um, but let me tell you, City Hall has more of an impact of what happens in Philadelphia than anything at Washington right now. Um, and that means like city council representatives, people that know about the needs in our community. Like, why is there a big pothole on right, right on, uh, on front street in front of Olney Charter High School? Like, how long is it going to take for the city to recognize that and address it? Now we take that up to our, our city council representatives. Hey, what are you going to do about this? Um, along with some other issues that we have, 
and we position them based on the ability that we have as citizens um, in this country is the ability to vote. And we know that they're running for office. Um, it could, they could be wanting to run for off, um, you know, for example, Maria Quinones, she's a city councilwoman, um, but they're saying in the next few years, she's gonna wanna run for mayor, right? And so how does she want to gain her allegiance, right? Like people, you know, to support her. Well, is people looking at her and her policies, like, are you really helping the community or are you just in power just because you wanna be in power? Now you, and that's the ability that we have as citizens to be able to flex our power through our vote is to see if the people in position to actually serve us, right? The polis uh, to serve the people are actually doing that and we hold them accountable in that way. And so I think the church really has to take the, offense, uh, the offensive role in these, on these areas because um, we've been called to influence it. We, we haven't been called to, you know, receive this light, right? Like the Bible talks about like this, uh, this um, we have this glorious treasure in, uh, in, in, in uh, it's treasure in, in, in pots of clay, right? And what that means is that we're fragile human beings. Like we're, uh, we're just humans, we're imperfect, we're broken at times, but God still chooses to embody his spirit inside each believer. Um, and this is glorious treasure. This is beautiful things that God is going to demonstrate who he is through our lives. And, you know, we should be able to take the offensive role in a sense that we're, we're confident to want to allow God to use us to influence the society. And that happens through our involvement. Uh, if we hide away, right? Like the, you know, uh, a, a, a candle that is lit or a, a, a lamp that is turned on, if you cover that, you know, it loses its effectiveness, right? And it's the same way for the church. The church has been lit with the the gospel of Christ and being able to influence the society, if we're hiding away from those things, then we miss out on what we've been commissioned to do, you know? Um, and again, that's Matthew uh, chapter five, verse 14 uh, and through 16, right? You are the light of the world. He's Jesus, when he said that, he, spe he spoke that to, his, to the disciples on the Sermon on the Mount and he spoke directly to them, those that were following him. He says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, or should not be hidden, right? Um, and so, yeah, that's why I wanted to bring this up because like, I think many, many people will want to have these two circles separated because of the fear that would happen, right? Like we're going to be, and I, I think, I, and I brought this up when I shared the, the last, the last time I came on probably like two months ago, where as a, as a new convert myself, I was around the same guys that I hung around with um, because I wanted to influence them and encourage them about the good news that I received. But then I had a church leader come up to me and said, Hey, don't hang around them too much because they're going to rub off on you. And so to me, like that, that offended me. Um, and it hurt me because I'm like, man, well, well, I was them not that long ago. Right. Like I, I was in a place where, you know, I didn't know who Jesus was. Um, but he came and he, and he, he opened my eyes to the reality of the gospel I, I'm excited about what he did for me. I want to share that with them, right? And um, I wasn't afraid of this whole contamination thing. Like I'm going to get contaminated, or um, you know, they're going to they're going to cause me to lose uh, my love for God, or whatever that is, that, whatever that misperception is. Um, and I think that hurts the church and its effectiveness to really influence society. Like we're talking about the God, the Creator, and now I'm preaching, right? Like I, I, I'm, I'm not even on my notes anymore. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the god of the universe right like who created everything by speaking it into existence and the bible says like he holds everything right through the power of his word where he gave us the ability of himself inside of us through the power of his spirit to be able to influence society and like if you're going to tell me that someone who doesn't know jesus is going to influence me not to love jesus when jesus is in me like that it just doesn't make sense um, and so, uh, I think that's the same approach that the church should have when influencing, uh, society through politics. Um, uh, because again, we want to have policy in place that enables people, um, who otherwise would be, uh, casted, uh, voiceless and, uh, vulnerable, right? We want to make sure that they, they are in position of being served. And so I don't know if that's exactly what you had in mind, Jeremy, but man, uh, my notes just went slide but I, I i i had to uh i you I mean that's what came up to mind when i saw that image man and i felt like that was something that we should talk about i think that's the exact conversation and uh 
you know, I mean, um, a couple of future conversations that we'll touch on. I mean, what the, the difficulty around this stuff is like you're saying, people get really anxious about not wanting, they, they, they think that issue is politics and I got to run away from it, you know? And I think that what people think of is that there's argument around that topic and I'm scared of it. And I think that that's an understandable reaction. But I think you're emphasizing, don't run away from it because we're followers of Jesus. We have courage, you know? But then the next practical, the next practical question is, how do I become the kind of person that can engage civically, right? In areas that are complicated. And, mm. and I, I don't think we can kind of solve that in one night because right. I think process right how do you become wise is basically what it's asking <laughs> and you know but that's what the conversation we want to have in a couple weeks is that's the that's the exact thing how do i you could say i don't want to vote just based on one issue yeah, I don't want yeah. To be a person that says i only vote because they're a woman or they're a man like uh, well most people wouldn't say that but i only vote because they're a woman well or i only vote because they agree with me on this one idea right. like we, want to, we want to have you know, overall, when you weigh all these things, it comes out this person, you know. But it does take work over time to understand these realities. And I don't think it happens overnight. And then you're, and then you're even emphasizing it takes work uh, on the city side because city is more important than country when it comes to Definitely. whatever, right? Definitely. No, definitely, man. Yeah. Um... I think like in a practical level, like if someone, you know, just speaking on this election in particular, but like, again, even six months after November, there's going to be another election, right? Like there's going to, and not, it's not just the president's election that's happening in November, right? Like there's other individuals that are running for office as well. And so, uh, you know, looking up ballot, uh, Pedia to find out everyone that is running for office and their specific policies. I think, um, as we do this, it's just being informed on their specific policies, right? Um, and we can do that on uh, both of their websites. Like if we were to go to Trump's website, Biden's website, uh, or any individual that is running for office, we can see their policies and their positions. Um, and does that align where, you know, what you believe is, is, is uh, should be right or, or will be serving the people that you care about and so forth. And that's the same approach that we should have for people that are running for city council office, uh, government, uh, governor, um, mayor, you name it, right? Any position in politics. Um, and so, you know, I think that's one of the approaches that we can have um, is by holding our own self accountable to be studious about it. Um, and I get it, like it's, it's more information that we have to look up. Um, but again, if we start to think about the, the, uh, the positives that come out of that, where, you know, we can hold these individuals accountable based on policies that they have in place um, by using our vote, you know, we're in a better position to effectively make change or, or cause change because we're aware of it. Um, we're aware of certain positions and, you know, how, how do we get involved? Like, um, you know, and Jeremy, you, you saw the, uh, the freedom writers like that. That was a, an event where, uh, Ness, uh, put together a Ness Espinosa. He's a leader at young life. Um, he was able to bring a bunch of people who rode their bikes. Uh, first it was to, um, uh, CFCF. Um, and then secondly, it was to, uh, city hall. And it was as a peaceful protest, you know, riding the bikes uh, all the way down to City Hall from Hunnam Park. And the idea was to bring awareness to the, uh, the unjust uh, rate of uh, young people that are put into prisons and tri tried as adults. Um, and so that was a, a demonstration that is civic engagement, right? Because that's raising awareness on what is unjust. Going to City Hall where there are representatives um that uh you know that pass policy that affect philadelphia you know it's right in their neighborhood right and so um you know there's there's ways that we can get involved um and it can be again very um yeah it doesn't have to be uh like moving mountains or anything like that can i can i ask what would be your suggestion i mean i guess you've already sort of begun to talk about it like um, like you said, Ballotpedia, um, but just kind of like, 
young adults, right? I mean, no longer high school students, right? Are trying to think about what is it like to be, what does it mean to be an adult? And one of the things that we think about as an adult is this idea of like learning to care about civics and care about your city and understand, you know, you know, you think about like, yeah, getting a driver's license and those kind of things. But yeah, and you start to think about like, understand what's going on out there, right? And, but it's, it's hard. It, I mean, I don't think, I don't, they don't give you a guide. How do you become right. Right. Um, involved? Um, so yeah, what, what would be some ideas? Yeah, um, you mean a lot of it for real, it's, uh, you have to probably just like search on your own. I know there's a lot of organizations that c try to compile as much resources together and you know any questions that you have. I know at Esperanza we tried that um, for this year, especially around like the whole voter registration process and mail-in ballots, uh, how to complete those things. Like we have, um, actually I'll drop it in the, in the chat. It's a, a, a link that we put together uh, just to help people uh, to know, um, you know, help answer some of the questions that they may have when they're trying to fill out their ballot, um, you know, where to go when it's time to, to cast their ballot. So it's like putting these links together. Um, but a lot of it's information that we have to kind of look on our own. Um, and it is difficult um, because, you know, there's been oftentimes, and I actually shared this with uh, uh, the poli side teacher at only charter high school today. And I told her that, you know, sometimes you have to go, you know, page by page on Google just to figure out, um, something in policy that you're looking for, uh, you know, somebody's position and stuff, stuff like that. Um, but I would say really the reason why it's not something that you should, um, be discouraged about from doing is because everything that we do really is influenced by policy. Right. Like, you know, even time zones waking up at a certain time, like that's that's really that, that, that was passed by policy, you know. Um, and I think that that was, uh, you know, the whole um, daylight savings and everything like that, like that was to assist farmers. And that's again, that's something that was passed through the government, um, you know, music. Right. Like not being able to download songs off of youtube right without paying it right like cutting corners right like you can get that's piracy issues like that's that's law um you know what 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 young people eat at high schools and middle schools based on their lunches right like that's it's based on what uh policies are in place for them to, to actually eat feed them so like i think in one city uh they were able to include pizza because pizza was viewed as a vegetable or something like that and so again like it is just policy right and so like everything we do, right? Like uh, traffic, right? Like how do we drive our speed limits? Um, everything we do in life really um, has some political influence in that. And so if there's something that, uh, that hurts our way of living um, in, you know, in a humane way, um, you know, I think it's our, our necessity to, to stand up and, and voice our opinions on that. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's kind of like what I was thinking about as far as like what, the importance of kind of being educated around that and, and being and having the motivation to self-educate because of the uh, the impact that it has on on our on our way of life. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've heard the uh, the idea. I don't know if it's a quote, but the idea that like you know a democratic kind of society only really works if people actually use the freedom that they have to get involved, yep. Uh, yep. have uh, some power to decide or to, you know, affect change. But if you're just like, I don't care. <laughs> if you have a whole country of people that are like, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> hey, and what's crazy is, right, like we're probably the, the, the country that pushes democracy the most all around the world but we have the least engagement in democracy probably in all around the world. Like it, we're not talking about like in statistics compared to like other countries and their ver voter turnouts, we probably have one of the lowest around the world and we're pushing democracy. And so, yeah, imagine like people are kind of like opting out of their ability to vote. Uh, what happens when maybe let's say God forbid government decides, Hey, we don't need your vote anymore. Right, we're we're gonna pass these things because this is our position, right? And now it doesn't become democracy anymore. 
Um, and so, yeah, you're right. Like true democracy only happens um, or only occurs when, when we participate. Yeah. Hmm. Which, you know, I, if you want to make a spiritual connection, you know, it's kind of like this idea, you know, like we've got freedom, right? So this idea of like, okay, you've been given freedom, but are you going to use it? Yes. I yes. think Jesus freed us not to sit around and like, <laughs> he freed us to yeah. exercise responsibility for our neighbor, our community, definitely. and not be apathetic. And so, but it definitely, I, I do think, I mean, I'm learning how to do this. I'm learning Same. to connect to, or not feel weird about emailing a local official or even getting their phone number and texting them. Yeah. Yeah, I literally just left a voicemail at a, uh, a senator in, uh, in Louisiana. Um, so it was, it was a social, social justice issue, you know, where, uh, you know, uh, a cop killed uh, an individual um, unarmed and it was actually just like, they released the audio of that person. And that person said like, yeah, like they were confessing that they like brutally beat this person until he, uh, until he just died. Um, and they recently just released the audio, but that officer was not uh, put in prison or anything like that. And so, yeah, like it's, but we have access to them, right? Like uh, in Washington, DC, you know, you're able to schedule sit downs with your representative based on your state uh, and bring up the concerns that I had. We did that at Esperanza for our National Hispanic Prayer Breakfast, but I learned, like I led a group to do that for their state and I was able to have conversations with uh, representatives uh, around some of the issues that were uh, concerning me. And uh, it was so freeing because I, I thought, again, you know, they're in this positions of being high on pedestals that we thought like, man, it's, you know, why are they gonna have time for me? But they're in position to actually have moments to speak to us and hear our concerns and bring that up to them um and 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 them being able to hear where 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 we are in those areas so yeah man totally. i have i have this other um you know based on what you were saying there's this other slide that i didn't get to the other week can i share it it's sure like, yeah um because you were talking about um yeah, you were talking about like, you know, not wanting to be limited by the way the world does politics. And I think there, it's fair to an extent. And so like, um, I was gonna show a bunch of different pictures, but this one I think is a story that I think encapsulated it pretty well. Mm. So uh, the mother, it was about that time that the mother of Zebedee um, brothers came with her two sons and knelt before Jesus with the request. What do you want? Jesus asked. She said, give your word that these two sons of mine will be awarded the highest places of honor in your kingdom. One at your right hand, one at the left hand. When the 10 others heard about this, they lost their tempers, disgusted with the two brothers. So as Jesus got them together to settle things down, he said, you've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave that is why the son of man what the son of man has done he has come to serve not to be served and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage and so just this idea of like you were saying like we want we have to be an influence right in 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 public you know things that matter politically but like can we be can we influence not by being by reflecting the way the world does it, you know? Like, mm. oh, that's good, that's good. I think when we hear, I don't like getting political, you hear, I gotta enter in and like be fists up and the same way that those two disciples wanted to sit next to Jesus and like, you know, fight for power. And it's like, can we voice, can we get our voice out there? Can we educate ourselves and be involved and care for the, others and defend the the vulnerable and speak out for the, the the person that's brutally murdered and learn how to do that like learn that you can actually sign petitions whatever find ways that to get involved but not do it in a way that um is like just like everybody else <laughs> no definitely no I, I love that you brought that um that that definitely like uh, i'm making a connection with uh 
with other areas too, but I think I think for sure even in in civics, man, um, how we can do that really just with the interest of serving um, the people in our society. Um, you know, that's you know I I go back to um, when when the disciples they saw Jesus ascended into heaven and uh, they were just in awe. You can imagine like you seeing Jesus being you know in his glorified body being lifted up um levitating all the way to heaven and the disciples being able to see the the clouds open up and see the angels and they're like wow this is this is a crazy sight right um but they stood there gazing and then the angels uh like i, I wish i can kind of like you know if they were to say what they said they said then in probably like philadelphia slang they're probably like yo what are you doing why, why are you just st staring up here looking at us like, didn't Jesus tell you to go wait for him at, uh, at the temple and he's going to send the spirit? Like, what are you doing just waiting up here? And I think the church took that position, right? Like, we're just waiting on Jesus. Like, we're amazed and we're just waiting for his return. And he said, and the, the angel said, the same way you see Jesus ascend to heaven is the same way you're going to see him return on clouds. Um, so what are you doing here? Why, do you, why are you just standing around? Go do what Jesus told you to do. Um, and I think a lot of our churches have taken that same position, man, of just gazing up um, and missing out on what God has called us to do. And it's really to influence, to serve, um, and really to help be a part of this whole idea of shalom, right? Like uh, that's, it's, some, it's, a, it's a Hebrew word that, um, that many people, you know, would use for like peace. Um, it's a greeting in, 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 in Jewish cultures, but it, it, me it means so much more. It means like um, what God has int intended, right? Like everything is right. Like somebody's well-being is well, like they're healthy. Um, you're in good, uh, good spirit. You're, you're, you're taken care of. Like it, it encompasses all of that. Um, and it's this idea that, you know, the church is moving, help, helping move society to that way. Right. Like, um, you know, the kingdom of God is here, but is also coming, right. Like being in this position where we're helping the, uh, the kingdom of God become uh, help help welcome the kingdom of God here on earth, and we're helping that right. Like instead of just waiting for Jesus to do it Himself, right? Like we're we're participants in that, and so no, I agree with that, man. I, I, I definitely want to look that up, man, and just meditate on that passage you just shared. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um... Anybody else have other have any other thoughts or questions? I mean. We can't, we're not going to pretend we're going to solve this. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of conversations, but I think it's been really helpful, but, uh, but I want to see if anybody else has any like thoughts or questions. Um, because otherwise I want to listen, see if we can listen to your new song and have you comment on it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> sure, bro. <laughs> well, I don't, I did want to mention just a few things that's going through my mind, you know, uh, based on uh, what you said earlier, I think you said something about, like, uh, we need to be more uh, on an offense rather than defense. You know, we got to put mm -hmm. ourselves out there and, you know, proclaim the gospel of God. And I think uh, many of us don't do that because uh, of the backlash, the added backlash the church gets you know it's like it's hard we not only got to defend our faith we also got to defend uh negative views of the church you know and yeah 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 it's kind of like a, a double whammy in, in, a, in a sense and uh i guess we get discouraged and you know we just it just it's just harder you know and uh uh you said something about um like how like you know <laughs> That was funny when you said the church is looking up, wait, wait for Jesus to come back. Oh, wait, Jesus, he's coming back. Wait, just, wait a minute, wait a minute, he's coming back. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I thought about that. And it's like, you know, it makes perfect sense. And we get so caught up in the in the majesty of God, you know, that we just, we don't we don't really go out and, uh, I'm speaking to myself, because I need to go, like, put myself out there, you know. And um, it was something else you said. And, uh you know, I don't know, it's just um I think I think well I think many of us also, some of us, um, we don't like to get down and dirty and rough when it comes down to 
the glory of God. You know, we want things, we want it to be easy and clean and, you know, we want to be seen when we do. We don't want to, you know, but thankfully we, you know, we live in, uh, they live in Kansas, I don't, but you know, I live in a park section. We go out, you know, amongst, you know, the most uh, disturbed places that you can imagine. We go out there, preach the gospel, we go out there and have a community, you know, but a lot of people wouldn't even touch that area. They would just, you know, from afar, you know, pray from afar. You know, I'm not saying nothing's wrong with that, but you know, they just pray from afar, you know, like you don't get in there and put their hands on the people and heal them. They want to, you know, pray from afar. And it's like, we need more people to go out and sit amongst uh, the sinners, you know, the sinners that, uh, you know what I mean? Like, like, cause Jesus was sitting amongst, uh, he's like, why, he's like, what are you doing? Why are you teaching sitting around sinners? He was like, like, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, these people, that those who are sick need healing, but those who are well, they don't need a doctor, they need nobody around, you know? So it's like, we look at that, but oh, you know, it's Jesus, but we don't do it ourselves. You know, we don't go amongst people. And it's, and it's funny because, um, you told the story about the girl, the lady was like, oh, you be hanging around them, they're going to roll over. But it's like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? We hang around the people who is just always nice and always. Right, 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 right. Because that's what Jesus did. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, so, I, and I know, we just, I don't know, it's just I, I just, I just took a lot from what you said. And, you know, this, this whole time, it's like, you know, I need to really be offensive, you know, not offensive as in like trying to hurt somebody, but. I need to put myself out there in an offensive way and uh, not be ashamed, uh, uh, not ashamed of the gospel, but not be ashamed because the church had backlash. And I know that's people going, oh, the church is dead, the church is dead, oh, this is that, but I got to be ready to, uh, to, 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 to deal with that, yeah. you know, to deal with that and just proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, you know what I mean? I just, that's what I need to do, you know. And I, I, Definitely, I would, man. Definitely. Things that be shared here, so that's pretty much it. No, that's dope, man. Thank you for sharing that, bro. Like that was really good. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree, man. Um, yeah, man. Like, yeah, like I don't know why, man. I don't, I don't know why the church is is a. I mean, and I'm and I'm I'm being very general, and it, and it could be just like my my experience with some churches and stuff like that, like. Um, but yeah, like I don't, I don't know why that where that came from, right? Right? Like, uh, like yeah, you're gonna they're gonna rub off like the negative ways of the world is gonna rub off on you, um, or you know you're around sinners, um, you're gonna sit like I don't know. It's kind of like you it, it's kind of instilling this fear like where you know it strips away like your own influence that you can have, right? Like uh, or or the authority that's given. Like Jesus said, he says. Uh, uh, you know, he said all, all authority, Jesus basically said like all authority, he has it after the, like the, the resurrection, like he, he talked about the authority of the entire universe. Like Jesus has the authority. He says, I give it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what does that mean? Like for the church, like, does that mean like not being able to connect with somebody that doesn't know Jesus and like being afraid? Like I would, you mean, I don't know. It's just, I don't get it. I don't get it. And you know, that's something that I, I've been kind of like mm. all about, you know, ever, ever since coming to, to, to the gospel, like, you know, I felt like, again, this is, this is good news. Like people should know about this and like, they're going to see that this is good by the way that, you know, we, not only we share that with them, but like how we live and we, and we demonstrate that like that's influence. Um, but the church, for whatever reason, man, they, I don't know. I don't want to be, I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm I'm taking a bad I don't know maybe I'm saying that too much I, I don't want to say like like the church itself is bad or like afraid but I've had experiences where it's like the church is afraid to engage you know let me jump off of what you're saying and both of you saying I mean I think our experience you know if 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 you go out and share and you and the people find out you're Christian then they have a bad taste in their mouth because they assume negative things you know Oh, you know, you're holier than thou, you think you're better, mm. you're hypocrites, whatever. Mm. But then we, within the church, we experienced, oh yeah, that's true, <laughs> right? You know, like mm-hmm. we don't have to be defensive, mm-hmm. right? We'd be like, yeah, that's true. You know, that's, we are those things. But I was thinking about like, you're saying at that moment, you're worried that you're not with someone and then they're offended, whatever. But we can just be like, we can admit it, yeah. right? And then secondly, um, 
why is does that fear of that of that kind of interaction make us stay and shrink back even more like if we want to earn the right for the church to be viewed positively mm -hmm. the only way to do that is to do positive things that people out there can see mm -hmm. get involved civically and do stuff that mm -hmm. um people agree is good you know even if even if you're it's not um like like one thought is like even before i share about jesus am i already showing jesus love am i like one thing i've been trying to do in our neighborhood is just clean up trash you know mm. uh, and like but can people agree that what you're doing is a good thing and then if you're going to tell them about jesus and say that's what yeah. that stuff is about yeah yeah like well i don't agree with you about jesus but you can keep doing your good stuff but maybe you'll wear them down you know and yeah. but at least instead of being so afraid to go out there and be involved politically or involved civically because we're worried that people will have a bad reaction to us not allowing that to, that fear to keep us from actually going out there it's just mm -hmm. the reaction we should be having right yeah and i'll probably end it on on this like um i don't know if i shared this the last time but uh, there was an, an individual that I was, uh, um, I'm friends with, uh, but I, I, I originally met him through his son who played in the mobile. Um, his, his, his father, the, okay. So the, so I, I'll name him. So his name is Josh. He played for the Uh, I met Josh through the mobile. We lived in the same neighborhood, but I also met his father and I met his father as a result of being with the mobile because he would be on the field supporting his son and whatnot. His father lived around the corner from uh, where I lived with my grandmother. I went to go visit Josh, hang out with Josh. I got to meet his father. His, his father's name is, is uh, Pito. And I would, you know, have conversations with Pito. And Pito would be like, oh, you're that Christian kid. You know, and he would just start making some jokes. But he, and he was a, a real atheist. Um, and he was like, yeah, you know, I've t thought, you know, thought about the Bible. But, I, you know, I think it's all fake. You know, and he would just talk. But he would ask me about, like, my personal experiences, what I thought about it, and we'll just chop it up. One day, you know, he he fell into like this big pressure where he felt like the only way around it was to try to take his life. Mm -hmm. um, and so he tried to overdose. He wrote a letter to his children. He had about, um, he has five different children. Um, and he wrote a letter to them uh, that he was going to take his life. So he took a bunch of pills, tried to overdose. Um, and in that, he had like this outer body experience where he felt like um his soul was leaving his body and in the process of that happening like he felt like uh like dark images were trying to grab a hold of him and the only thing he remembers was uh waking up in the hospital um and he was at uh episcopal hospital right there on uh kensington and um and lehigh and uh all he remembers was like just trying to you know connect with the people that he knew that were Christian. And I remember him calling me, I had to go with, go over to the hospital with him. Uh, and I prayed with him and, you know, we would chop it up about scripture, some questions he had. And like, to this day, this dude is baptized. He's, he right. married the, uh, the, the lady that he was with for years. She's now they're married. Uh, he's in ministry. Like it's, it's it was just amazing. But like, yeah, like, what if I was afraid to engage with him because he was an atheist, you know? Um, and he and he questioned my Christianity, right? Like, I was, a, I would have been afraid to engage with him. I wouldn't have had that relationship with him. Um, and so, like, I, I don't think like opposition should, you know, cause us to be afraid. But like, again, just going back to like what I mentioned earlier about like knowing what we have inside of us. Yeah, we're broken ourselves. We're humans. We're, we're we make mistakes. Like Jeremy says, like. The church is full of hypocrites. Yeah, you mean we own up to that. Yeah, we, we make mistakes. However, we're we're jars of clay with with an amazing treasure inside of us. Let me introduce you to that treasure, and um and that should be the confidence that we have. Like you know, Paul even said it. Like you know, I don't boast in my own self, um, but I boast in Christ. You know, knowing what Christ has done in me, right? Um, and so that's that's another topic where Paul could have boasted that he was a a Hebrew of Hebrews and he studied more than anyone else and all that, but he didn't choose to boast in any of that. He said he considered that all garbage, um, but he only boasted in the cross of Christ and what Jesus did. And um, it's really just being confident in that, you know? 
So good, man. There's so many topics came out, but you know, if I could summarize what I think I heard you say today, it's basically get out and be the light of the world. Yes. That means as at least a big part of it is get involved in civics and don't just, you know, leave it alone. And, uh, and by the way, along the way, you may find opportunities for people to see that light and, and want to come to Jesus. So, um, but that's encouraging, man. I mean, I think that we definitely want to, I want to basically promote what you guys are trying to do at, at Esperanza with the resources and those kind of things to help us um, help young people get involved and, and to care and to educate ourselves. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to see if we can like get up, get some links, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I encourage all of us to try to vote, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, the mail-in thing, there's whatever, you know, but that's, it's uh, like, like, um, like, like Anthony, what you're emphasizing today, it's not just about that one, like, November 3rd vote, as if that's your way to be civically involved. So hopefully we can all kind of become citizens that, that are much more engaged um, beyond our little sort of Amen. Amen. bubbles. Citizens of God, not just citizens of Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, Anthony, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to pray thank for you, you, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. I, I really enjoyed this conversation, man. I was blessed. Uh, I, I was super encouraged just having this conversation with you guys. Yeah, I want to pray for the effort that you're doing with uh, and, and Esperanza USA is doing with, with these kind of things. But Definitely, also, bro. Thank you. It makes sense to pray for our election, too. <laughs> so, yes. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray. Uh, for Anthony kind of symbolizing and representing um, this broader cause here in the city of Philadelphia of, of helping our, um, our city that, um, and especially our neighborhoods that tend to not have a lot of uh, engagement. Um, and maybe because they feel like they don't ever feel like government really ever works for them. And it's just kind of like, you know, you become apathetic, but uh, I pray that, um, that, people like Anthony and Esperanza and other people can spark hope that no, there is, we don't have to give up. We can keep working towards um, positive change. And, um, and in the process, we can shine the light of God. And, uh, and we also pray for our um, big picture United States election. Lord, um, I don't think any of us are, are in the illusion that things are going really well. <laughs> and we all recognize that there's a lot of conflicts that's really hard to listen to each other that, um, even like we talked about last week, we hardly know how to listen to each other and to um, empathize and share opinions without like fighting with each other. God, teach us your ways. Help us help the country. Help, uh, pray, just intervene in whatever way, God. Um, um, I do want to pray for the physical healing of Donald Trump's body. Um, but also, I pray that you would heal the mind, body, soul, spirit. Um, every part of um, both of our candidates and really all of Washington. <laughs> mm -hmm. take, take away any corruption, take away any lies, take away any, anything that is not of you within them. I pray that they would be open to your spirit. Um, and so, Lord, we, we want to become the kind of people that care about these things. Um, don't just kind of say, ah, meh, politics, whatever. Um, but that care about mm -hmm. our neighbors just as we care about ourselves. Um, that love God and love our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so help us to do that. Help us to learn to do that. Um, thank you so much for Anthony helping us continue the conversation and help us to become more wise. Um, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.